I want to thank the organizer for having me here, and I am glad to share my recent results with you. These are my disclosures. So as an introduction, I want to mention that one out of eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer before the age of 80. About 42,000 women in the U.S. are expected to die from breast cancer this year. In particular, HER2 positive is a breast cancer subtype that affects between 13 to 20 percent of the patients. This breast cancer subtype has an aggressive behavior and a poor prognosis. For the last two decades, trastuzumab's administration as a first-line treatment in HER2 positive breast cancer has positively changed the prognosis of these patients. Trastuzumab is an anti-HER2 monoclonal antibody that binds to the fourth domain of the HER2 molecule, as you can see here in this drawing. However, resistance events hamper its clinical benefit, in particular its overall survival, in 27-42% to 42 of the cases. Different strategies have been developed to overcome this resistance. One of them is lapatinib, a dual EGFR HER2 tyrosine kinase inhibitor. It is used as a third-line treatment in women with HER2-positive metastatic breast cancer. However, its clinical benefit is less than 30%. We have previously demonstrated that the expression of the pro-inflammatory cytokine TNF-alpha turned trastuzumab-sensitive cells and tumors into resistant ones, and that the mechanism underlying this effect was mediated by the upregulation of the membrane glycoprotein mucin-4, or MUC4 from now on. As you can see here in this model, MUC4 locates very near to the HER2 molecule in the plasma membrane of tumor cells, and with its glycosylations, it hides trastuzumab's epitope on the HER2 molecule, reducing its binding and impairing its pharmacological effects. We have also proved that women with HER2-positive MUC4-positive tumors had a poorer disease-free survival probability compared to those patients whose tumors were MUC4-negative. We have also demonstrated that TNF-alpha blockade with etanercept which is a fusion protein that inhibits transmembrane TNF-alpha and soluble TNF-alpha, downregulated MUC4 expression and sensitized trastuzumab-resistant cells and xenograft to this monoclonal antibody. So, taking into account that lapatinib is used in the metastatic HER2-positive breast cancer patients, the purpose of this study was to evaluate the participation of TNF-alpha on the cell migration in lapatinib-resistant cells. In addition, we aim to study the participation of this cytokine in the lapatinib resistance in a preclinical model and the anti-tumor innate immune response upon lapatinib treatment. In this case, we introduced to our study a new TNF-alpha blocking agent, the dominant negative protein IMBO3, or dominant negative from now on, which binds only to the soluble TNF-alpha isoform, forming an heterotrimeric inactive molecule with no capacity to bind the TNF-alpha receptors. The dominant negative has no effect on the transmembrane TNF-alpha isoform, leaving it available for participating in the immune response against the tumors. To evaluate the role of TNF-alpha on cell migration of lapatinib-resistant cells, we used the human HER2-positive breast cancer cell line, GIMT1. These cells are de novo resistant to lapatinib, are MUC4 positive, and they produce TNF-alpha. So through a wound healing assay, we evaluated the wound closure upon 18 hours of treatment. And we found that neither etanercept or dominant negative nor lapatinib alone were able to inhibit cell migration. However, when TNF-alpha was blocked either by a tenercept or dominant negative in combination with the lapatinib treatment, cell migration was inhibited to a 50%. 
to study whether this process was mediated by TNF-alpha-induced MUC4 expression, we generated a cell line bearing a doxycycline-inducible SH MUC4 RNA. Under the same experimental conditions as stated before, we found that upon MUC4 silencing, now lapatinib alone was able to inhibit cell migration to the same extent to that of the combination treatments, indicating that MUC4 enables TNF-alpha-induced migration in lapatinib-treated cells. Next, we studied the effect of the TNF-alpha blockade on the lapatinib resistance in an in vitro setting, and found that the JMT1 cells became sensitized to lapatinib when TNF alpha was blocked either by etanercept or dominant negative. So, with this result in mind, we moved to a preclinical model. So, we injected the JMT1 cells subcutaneously into female nude mice. Once a tumor was established, we treated the animals twice a week IP with IgG, etanercept or dominant negative, daily by oral garbage with lapatinib, or twice a week IP with the combination therapies. Tumor volume was measured routinely and at day 15 the animals were sacrificed. As you can see here in the graph, the combination therapies were able to efficiently reduce tumor growth in contrast to the monotherapies. The right panel here shows the tumor weight at the end of the experiment, and you can see a significantly reduction on this variable only in the groups treated with the combination therapies. Here are some representative pictures of each experimental group, and you can see how smaller the tumors belonging to the lapatinib plus etanercept and lapatinib plus dominant negative groups are in contrast to the other ones, indicating that TNF alpha blockade sensitizes tumors to lapatinib. We also studied the histology of the tumors and we found a significantly reduction of the mitotic figures in the tumor tissues that were treated with the combination therapies, in contrast to the ones that didn't respond to therapy. Since we found different effects of the TNF alpha blocking agents in the in vitro setting than in the in vivo one, we wondered whether the innate immune response was involved in this difference or accounted for this difference. So we decided to study the tumor infiltrating immune cells the macrophages, the myeloid-derived suppressor cells, and the NK cells. The first population we analyzed were the macrophages, since the antitumoral responses are known to be mediated by the M1 subtype of this population. While we did not observe any difference in the number of total macrophages among treatments, we found an increase in the M1 M2 ratio at the expense of a decrease in the M2 subtype in the tumor microenvironment of the lapatinib plus dominant negative group. Moreover, we found that the combination therapies decreased the percentage of the myeloid-derived suppressor cells on the tumor microenvironment. However, only treatment with lapatinib plus dominant negative was able to decrease the monocytic subtype of the myeloid-derived suppressor cells, which are the most immunosuppressive ones. Finally, we found that only treatment with lapatinib plus dominant negative was able to significantly increase NK cell activation and degranulation in the tumor microenvironment compared to the monotherapies, but also to the combination treatment of lapatinib plus etanercept. All these results indicate that the TNF alpha blockade in combination with lapatinib transforms the tumor microenvironment into a less immunosuppressive one. So, taking all these results into account, we can conclude that the TNF alpha blockade is able to overcome lapatinib resistance, inhibiting tumor growth and cell migration. Moreover, the soluble TNF alpha neutralization together with lapatinib treatment 
unleashes an anti-tumor innate immune response characterized by an increasing in the NK cell activation and degranulation, a polarizing of the macrophages into the M1 subtype, and a decrease in the MDSCs, particularly the monocytic subtype. We propose that women with HER2-positive, MUC4-positive breast cancer tumors undergoing lapatinib treatment would benefit from a combined therapy with the specific soluble TNF-alpha blocking agent IMBO3, particularly those with brain metastasis since both lapatinib and IMBO3 are permeable to the brain-blood barrier. I want to thank all the members of my lab and the financial founding. Thank you all for your attention. I will be happy to take questions. Thank you and stay safe.